Welcome to Electron Line. In this video, we're going to show you how to use the nodal analysis method to solve a simple circuit like this. And we're going to do it in a general fashion. We're not going to use numbers, just simply the method, the approach, and how to do that. To help us, to guide us, we have seven steps through which we need to go. We need to first find the reference node with a known voltage. We need to then assign voltages to the other nodes. We then assign currents to each branch. We apply the, and what we call here, the Kirchhoff current law to each node. So we use that to find what the currents in and out of each node are. We're going to define each current using Ohm's law. We then substitute those current definitions into the node current equations that we got from step four. And finally, we set up a linear set of equations to try and solve for the unknown voltages. We use the nodal analysis method in case we have current sources like this. So the nodal analysis method does lend itself specifically when we have current sources. We can adapt it for voltage sources, but it applies specifically to current sources. So the ultimate goal then for solving a circle like this is to both find the voltages at the nodes and find the currents in each branch. That's ultimately what we're trying to find here. So how do we do that? Well, let's find our, follow our steps. We first find the reference node and the best thing to do is to assume that some node here is attached to ground. So what we're going to do to make it simple, let's go ahead and attach this node to ground so that becomes our reference node. We note that the voltage there is zero volts. Then the next thing we're going to do is we assign voltage to the other nodes. In this case, there's two nodes, one here and one there. So we'll call that V1 and we'll call that V2. Even though we don't know yet what V1 and V2 are, that's the purpose of this method, is to find those voltages. The next step is we want to assign currents to each branch. And if you can try to estimate what the direction of each current is going to be, that usually helps in understanding how it's laid out. Notice that this current source drives current in this direction, enters this branch right here. There's an additional current source over here that drives current in that direction. We can assume that the rest of the branches, the current will flow in this direction and probably flow in this direction from this node back to the node where the potential is zero. So I'm going to assume, and let me use a different color, that we have I1 in this direction, we have I2 in this direction, and we have I3 in this direction. Notice I use small i's to indicate the currents in the branches. I use capital I's to indicate the current of the current sources. So now we've completed step three. Next is we're going to use the Kirchhoff's current law to each node. So we're going to look at each of the two nodes. We're going to add up all the currents entering the node and set that equal to all the currents leaving the node. So for this first node right here, notice we have one current entering, I1, and three currents leaving, capital I2, small i2, and small i1. So we can write that I1 is equal to I2 plus small i1 plus small i2. So that's step four. I like to label my steps so I can follow what I'm doing more clearly here. On the second node, I notice that we have I2 entering the small i2 entering and small i3 leaving. So all currents entering, which is capital I2 plus small i2, must add up to all the currents leaving, which is small i3. I now have my two equations I'm going to use to solve this particular circuit. Now it turns out if we had used Kirchhoff's law straight on, then we probably would have ended up with three equations. Notice that this method leaves us only with two equations, even though there are three unknowns, and we'll show you in a moment how to solve that. The next thing we want to do is define each current using Ohm's law. So we'll look at currents I1, I2, and I3, and try to find some method of, of uh, defining what those currents are equal to. So step five, I1 is equal to the voltage divided by the resistance on that particular branch. So what is the voltage drop? Well, we have V1 here, assuming that V1 is larger than, v, than the voltage right here then we could say that the current is going to be equal to the voltage drop, which is V1 minus zero, divided by the resistance on that circuit, which is R1. So we've defined I1 in terms of the voltage drop and the resistance on that branch. We can do the same for I2. I2 can be defined as the voltage drop between V1 and V2, assuming that V1 is a higher potential than V2. We can say that this is V1 minus V2, that's the voltage drop, divided by the resistance on that branch, which is R2. 
and we can define I3 as being the voltage drop from V2 to, vo to 0 volts. That would be V2 minus 0 volts at the voltage drop divided by the resistance of that circuit, which is R3. So now we have all three of the currents, all three of the unknowns, defined in terms of the voltages at the nodes and the resistance on each of the branches. Step six, what we're going to do next, let me come over here. So step six, we're now going to take these current definitions and plug them back into our two equations right here. So we take our first equation and we end up with I1 is equal to I2. Now these should be known values. These are the current sources of the circuit plus I1, and I1 is defined as V1 divided by R1, so V1 divided by R1, plus I2, and I2 is defined as the difference between V1 and V2 divided by the resistance on that branch, which is R2. So our first equation right here that we got by applying Kirchhoff's current law, we end up now having that in terms of the currents that are known quantity of the, of the current sources and the voltages. Notice that we've eliminated the currents in that equation and also notice there's only two unknowns on the voltages V1 and V2 therefore we'll, only, we'll end up with only two equations instead of three equations for the three currents. On the second equation again we'll plug in what these are equal to I2 is the current source plus I2 the unknown I2 which is equal to V1 minus V2 divided by R2 and that should equal I3 and I3 is defined right here as V2 divided by R3. So now we have two equations and two unknowns. The next step would be to go ahead and solve for each of the voltages or I shouldn't say, yeah, each of the voltages but first what we need to do is set up a linear set of equations in terms of V1 and V2. So let's go ahead and do that. Again, remembering that I1 and I2, capital I1 and I2, are known quantities. What we can do here is move the I2 to the other side, turn the equation around, so we end up with V1 over R1 plus V1 over R2 minus V2 over R2 is equal to, and move I2 to the other side, we get I1 minus I2. For the second equation, we get V1 over R2 minus V2 over R2. And then moving this to the left side, we get minus V2 over R3 is equal to, we move I2 to the other side, we get minus I2. And notice what we end up now, we end up in an equation where we have the constants on the right side of the equation and we have the two variables V1 and V2 on the left side. What we can do now is factor out a V1 and a V2 in each case. So we have V1 times 1 over R1 plus 1 over R2 minus V2 times 1 over R2 is equal to I1 minus I2. And the next here, when we solve this for V1, we get uh, V1 times 1 over R2 plus if I factor out a V2, I get a minus 1 over R2 minus 1 over R3, and that is equal to minus I2. So that's what we mean by a linear set of equations. Notice we have some constant time V1 minus some other constant times, oh, that should not be V squared, but V2, some other constant times V2 equals a constant, and here we have V1 times a constant plus V2 times a constant equals some other constant. And now we have a linear set of equations that we can solve in a number of ways. We can use Kramer's rule, we can use algebra, we can use uh, matrices, any, any different type of method to solve these types of equations. And throughout the videos to come, we'll show you several methods that'll, that are very handy for these kind of equations. So we can show you how to solve them. Well, that's how we do this in general. So the nodal analysis method is a method where we have a circuit that has in principle current sources we assign values for the nodes that are unknown we assign a known value typically zero volt at some point in the circuit then we reference everything to that zero volts we assign the currents to the branches and then we set up our equations just like we did using those seven steps and that makes it fairly straightforward to solve a circuit like this and there's some videos coming up to show you exactly how to do that.